And do you really want to have Adblock Pro Mod for your truck simulator? <laughs> I mean, is wow. that the future we're going to end up with? Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. And then joined every week by the man up north, one Jordan Fang, and on the Isle of Britannia, you know him, you love him, Pedro Mateus, and together <laughs> with you. Shout out dynamic. Helping us form the button that I forgot to put on the control surface, but boom, there it is. Cocaine oh, Voltron. All right. I got those other buttons on there. I, I was talking in the uh, pre show. Man, a lot of pre show. Sorry about that. Go back and listen to the pre pre super shows. We're about three minutes late to the live stream because we <laughs> needed answers. It. You can listen to it on your Sony mini disc. Oh, dude. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right? That would be pretty meta. And I don't mean Facebook. <laughs> that would be pretty easy to make. O you know what? Magnetic. Let's just skip putting LGC on cassette and let's just go straight to mini disc. I, I think that is uh, a we'll conversion's going to be a lot easier. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But a um, couple things I've been playing around with. Uh, yeah, I've been like trying to organize stuff on the stream deck with the Focus Companion playing around and all that. Have either of you ever like played Assassin's Creed to any extent, any version of them? Yes. The first one. Yeah, the first one. And um, I think this applies to every single Assassin's Creed. Is there it comes a point in every Assassin's life where you just genuinely can't be fucked to play it anymore. Like, all right, I'm bored. Are, are you done that's collecting a, birds and like <laughs> notes? I think that's more like, of a problem with the new ones because the worlds are massive and they have the you know Ubisoft overcrowding of the map population oh yeah, the, issue. The, there, there, there's so there's so much stuff to do. It's like they make these games. And like, with, with without the notion that like other games exist, you can't just spend all your time playing Assassin's Creed, despite what Ubisoft would like. But there's yeah. nothing. To, I mean, there's so much. To, um, it's not even choice paralysis. I'm just sitting there like, what am I supposed to do at this point? Yeah, I got like 19 quests. Why? Because I farted at a bird, man. Um, <laughs> the, the, the loop has got a little stale. Dude, it's not, it's not um, engaging anymore. Yeah, I'm like seven, eight hours. So always need something new to play. But we're going to be talking about uh, a couple of games we might want to play in just a little bit uh anything new going on uh, you've rearranged your office kind of you're, you're in the process of thinking about yes i'm i'm adjusting the the the, the feng shui here as it, as it were yeah fr friday i decided that you know what i'm sick of this layout i'm gonna move stuff around and so i was facing a corner and now i'm facing a wall i gotta like change the location of this tv so i gotta like pull the wall mount out and stick it there it's this it's the whole thing hopefully it will i don't know what it will do it will it will it will be a change and maybe maybe that will make my life complete i don't pedro, know you ever had that happen to you we were talking about that before about pedro showed up is like you just walk in a room you're like you can move a thing you get an idea and there goes the rest of that day I, not in this place i don't have that issue because it's tiny and i already have you know not enough space as it is a part of uh, the impetus to move is very much just get a, a bigger place, but maybe have like a room as my office, as it were. Mm. Also, so I can play with the uh, <laughs> the Oculus Quest too. <laughs> oh, do do Doctor D 2s respect, dude. Yes. <laughs> How dare you, man? Why are you gonna be like that? Uh... <laughs> I had to create a meta account. <laughs> Thankfully, they didn't make me sign into Facebook, so there's that. But I had to create a meta account to use this thing. It's an Android phone that's in there. There's the guts of an Android phone. You sideload APKs and you get your VR games like that. Oh, so they didn't even get the good one where you didn't have to create a... Uh... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do you feel closer to Carmack This is the cheapo it? version, like the consumer version. I, I just like that, you know, when, you, when you're not busy chilling for Microsoft, you take a break and you're like, here's some Facebook. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it I, is. If, if only they were paying him for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but then again, I didn't pay for the headset. It's on loan from the office. So. Yeah. You're just building up for the big eyes. He, he keeps on like taking and borrowing things of slightly higher value until he gets to his goal. But, that, but that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, I, 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 he's that, just gonna that, drive out with an ambulance, just yes. like straight up steal an ambulance. Gone. That one's a lot cheaper than the uh, Hololens, <laughs> like. 10 times cheaper than the whole lens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 
just, just fucking like try to stuff a defibrillator like under your shirt and walk out the building. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that suck if that went off? You're like, yeah, hey, it's you're a right. clear. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you would just drop, man. It would be comical. Unlike the horse, who you just really couldn't defibrillate the horse. I mean, because no, a you, you, he likes it. But B, it's yeah, you you can cram as much voltage, wattage, whatever as you want through that horse. It's just gonna moan in delight because it's the steam. It's here. It's finally here. Yes, if you were, if you were using the, the beta up until now, the oh. new um, UI update. Is now unstable as well, which uh, Nori was not expecting that, and she let out go? a uh, very audible "What the hell's I that?" I was about to say, "What's that?" The go-to was like, "The fuck's this?" <laughs> yeah, no. What that did little, you do, uh, square, <laughs> That little square window that Steam now shows when you're logging in. Nori saw it. I was like, "What the hell?" Oh, that's Steam. Oh, okay. But yeah, no. They so changed the UI significantly. Uh, it, it's I like it. Uh, the one thing that uh, they kind of done goof that I noticed other than the inability to interact with anything on a page for a while there, which is now fixed. Um, you know what? Whoever's got the raging clue for Hollow Knight at Steam, we can be friends. You can come over to a place <laughs> <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> uh, the, uh, like the system information that Steam allows you to uh, yeah. open up a little window to get your system information. The... If you go to their GitHub, one of the steps is copy out your system information, put it in a gist, and put that on the um, Wait, we on the issue what, you're we, creating. We get to see what that to-do list actually says. <laughs> kill the bug bosses. Damn it. Come back. <laughs> kill the bug bosses. Find, find more, more notches. notches. Save the save. little green dudes. Uh, stop dying. Stupid, Stupid bugs, bugs keep killing me. Okay. Yeah, stop dying. <laughs> that's, a, that's about right for Hollow Knight. Stop dying. Yeah, yeah please. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, now you have the ability to copy text out of the system information window again, which they kind of forgot that that was a thing. So <laughs> that's nice. That's very nice. Yeah, the uh, what the I, I think the, the the big change is just for for me is like the overlay, uh, the Steam overlay used to like be kind of clunky. Now it has nice stuff. As as we mentioned, there's notes you can have like it as posted in like the corner as a transparency. Um, yeah, they, it, it took them a little time to, uh, to hammer out the bugs, but I guess they missed one when it comes to scaling. They did. <laughs> they, 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 they did. I mean, I, I like the new look. I'm like, oh, it looks different. I hate it immediately. But you know, after a day, I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Oh, look, I mean, for me, it's like a bunch of features. Like I don't want any of this stuff, but Hey, some people might want to use it. However, I don't know if uh, it's the new NVIDIA drivers or the latest beta of this and i've also tried it with the stable if you were mousing over like store library and community there was like a little bit of visual garble war gobble stuff that popped up before the graphic showed up that's gone they fixed that until until last night i was playing around i was digging around i was doing something i shouldn't going through the options and I'm like oh yeah gpu acceleration all that stuff on the video works now and i just enabled it I need to restart. I'm like, you do your thing, Valve. Do your thing, Steam. This is great. And it disappeared. Didn't come up anywhere. Wasn't on any screens. Didn't. But you know what? It docked. It docked. So I had the Steam thing, but I couldn't get to the library. I could launch a game. Couldn't couldn't get anything to open. Hmm. What do you do? Apparently, you kill it. Restart it again. Try that. (laughs) Tried that. Can you get any ideas on this troubleshooting? Steam dash dash reset. <laughs> that that's that's uh, the nuclear option. Did Usually, that. just reboot the box. <laughs> oh baby, we drilled it all the way down to just wiping out the dot steam directory. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, fine. Scorched earth, all right. Didn't fix it. Then I found the error. It's like unable to authenticate with X whatever. Didn't like. What is this? All right, Google. Went to ended up on Reddit, strangely enough. Go back and listen to the pre-shows. And um, what happened is it tried to guesstimate my size or whatever. This is what I narrowed it down to. So now, unfortunately, I have two options with um, Steam UI for this. And it's like comically big because I have a <laughs> UHD. I have a 4K consumer 4K display, but it's also 43 inches. So I don't need scaling. You know, I can see everything. It's a big screen. 
it had that on like by two. So it, it looked like Tonka town, you know, everything's like <laughs> big goofy buttons and I couldn't like drag and move the window. It was broken. Found out, uh, you can do that with GDK scale or you can do the steam force desktop scaling equals one until they get this fixed. And it's not just me. So yeah, there's like three pages on this post yep. right now of <laughs> okay. people going, and it's oh, not just the Linux. Oh, right. Thing. Right. This, this shit's <laughs> cross platform. Everybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> well that that's that's the thing with this update they have a lot more uh shared code base between uh, all of the all the various different steam clients oh. now so now bugs that show up in one place will show up everywhere you know there's incentive to get things fixed. that helps yep. you know, yeah it does yeah <laughs> we, I, I mean we were i was talking about this uh last week with like the with the the porting stuff you gotta fix your trunk always fix your trunk that's how you like cinch issues in the long term yeah pretty well pedro you got a steam deck and I do. Uh, you like playing all the games like uh, soap, butter, <laughs> racing, or whatever. Uh, yes, that one's technically doesn't need retro deck, but you, I suppose you could launch it from there. The, the, that's a possibility. Now, retro deck is uh, another effort to try and create a unified-ish UI to basically get all of your emulators in one place on the Steam Deck. Emu deck is has been my choice ever since they simplified the um the install uh process. But Retro Deck is effectively um just emulation station, but set up specifically to work on the deck. And I can absolutely see why you just have the one shortcut for emulation station with a nice theme preset, uh, instead of having all of each individual emulator games uh populating your deck. It's fine. Or but having to go the into news, Retro Arch and yes, <laughs> just yeah. having to navigate, load the core manually, do all that. No, this is the new version of Retro Deck. It's available. Uh, not seven O B. There you go. And the uh, yeah, no, it is. <laughs> there's a significant uh, up update list, which uh, they, if you have uh, like a Nintendo controller that you'd like to use, or you're using the Nintendo layout on the Steam Deck. It now accommodates for that a lot better than it used to, which is good. Yeah, that that, that bit is a bit annoying when you're like emulating old Super Nintendo games, and it's like mm -hmm. press A. I mean, I mean <laughs> Not X. That one. I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. So ha ha having something respect the actual layout of the of the physical controller. Very, very, very. They shouldn't even bother with like the Nintendo's like the fucky little yellow buttons. Yes, the the the, the C <laughs> buttons. Uh, they also they also remove their old BIOS checker, and they have a better one that should be able to better fetch and inform you where the uh, BIOSes for your various emulators that require them are coming from. That's always good to see. And yeah, just a bunch of uh, just a bunch of other like um, better better checking for uh, Yuzu versions. Uh, there's an about section now. Um, yeah, small small quality of life stuff. Uh, no really major like killer features, at least none that I saw in this. It's room. just a lot of the teeny tiny ones. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see. Yep. Good to see. Now, a couple of new games this week, and this one is not what I wanted it to be, though. No, I, I, th <laughs> I thought there would be like a lot more dodging and rolling here, but it is not the case. It is Cat Souls. It is not a Souls-like game. It is a game where you play a cat with seven lives that are your souls, and then when you use them all up, that, that's it. Game over. Uh, it's all done in uh, OpenGL. Uh, it's 45 oh, levels. Oh, look at the kitty dying. Look at the kitty dying. <laughs> yeah, you, you, get, you get about 45 levels of Oh, content, hang on. Which is okay, I under, I, dude, that's uh, kind of glossed over that. You use your souls as a part of the mechanic of uh, jumping yeah. through obstacles. Yes. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's, that's very clever, uh, actually using souls uh, to indicate that, look, death isn't just a failure state. That's it's an like actual a, mechanic that you need to use it's like the, in the uh, game. The, the puzzle getting... game where you have to like put your body on spikes and then walk over your yep. own corpse to yeah, I, I like games that play around with that. Um, yeah, so uh, the, I mean, again, you get forty five levels and it's pretty cheap. It's like five ninety four ninety nine US. I right. Think. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, get your money's worth. Get a, okay. This is got like I, I see a bunch of inspiration from like Metroidvania. So the last now, Pedro, uh, please tell me instead of a bonfire has a scratching post. <laughs> uh, 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 you don't see any kind of uh, safe points other than the level transitions uh, which or, are just or, or doors box. so yeah <laughs> uh, 
that was uh, yeah no the the souls here is very much not because of you know the from software games it is just ubuntu 20 apparently <laughs> what do you think about um have you have you back been back and played a little more lines of because i've seen it apparently everyone on the internet who's like a souls fanatic like this thing's really good the the i haven't bothered i don't know, even know if they updated the demo but yeah no the once I realized that, oh yeah, if you uh, cap the frame rate at 30, dodging and parrying becomes significantly easier than if you were playing the game at 144. So you've like had to wait a Okay. Over here, no, it's, yes. It's cinematic. <laughs> How many hours do you have in that? Three. How many times did you beat it? Just once? Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Gotta wait for the uh, then again, I went around and I explored everything <laughs> that the demo offered, mm. and then I killed the final boss. So yeah, <laughs> it's pretty decent. Um, I, I like visually. I think that game is uh, hmm, really yeah, well done. Very good. And yeah. P- P- Pinocchio is just like a fucked up story anyway. So if you want to do like a dark monster filled version of it, like it's right. very, very, very rich ground for uh, that for one's very puppet heavy. <laughs> <sighs> so everybody does does. Anybody remember a game called This is uh what was it called? Kingdom Two Crowns? The pixely no. one, yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I don't remember it at all. You don't? Um oh. well it came to mind because I've thought about like doing a, it's multiplayer. Mm. Like you build a in you might have seen streamers play it. Let me see if I'd pull this and up. And if you've been keeping up with the bundles, you probably have it from one of the humble bundles. Right. That's the other thing. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you build like little bases on your left and right, and you got to run back and forwards and repair them, do resource management. But it's got online multiplayer. And, you know, it, it's set in the medieval. Well, look, you're riding a horsey with a horns. One of those things. One of those horny horses. Right. So what if all of that took place in the 80s? Well then, then we would have Kingdom Eighties. Yeah, that that's what we got. This is, this yeah. is what this is. This is uh, that game with fixies. They better be a clown. <laughs> the uh, no 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 clowns. You get you get your four characters. You get the the leader, the whiz, the tinker, and the champ. Who I'm glad got some work after he got killed and slayed the spire. Uh but yeah, you uh, this follows the sort of standard kingdom uh, template. They, they had, like, Kingdom Classic, Two Kingdoms was a sequel, and this is a standalone <laughs> expansion to it. Uh, but yeah, you build your base. Um, during the day, you gather resources. And then at night, monsters attack, and you gotta fight them off. And in this case, you get these really cool little, like, blob monsters. Uh, here, they're called the Greed. And yeah, I like, I like the design of them. It's very, very, very evocative of, like, something, like, earthbound a little bit. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it's the Stranger Things mod for Kingdom. Kingdom. <laughs> You know what they're right about that game I might like, Dome Keeper. Yeah, go buy Dome yes. Keeper. <laughs> Dome Keeper is pretty good. Yeah. Dome Keeper is more like Dope Keeper, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But look at all the fixies. <laughs> you have multicolored fixies and different types. And yes. Skateboard. Yeah. You got the chopper. <laughs> the chopper fixie. Mm. Yeah, apparently there's like different bikes and skateboards as like mounts that you can get. It's 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 a whole thing and it's a pretty like deep game in and of itself, so you can get lost in here for you need one of those cutting bleeding edge versions of an Ubuntu, nineteen oh four? Nineteen dot oh dot oh four. Oh four. Oh that elusive one. Uh four yes. gigs is pretty small. <laughs> Does it have a pitch online? No, this is only single player mm-hmm. who earns. I guess. Well, that's unfortunate. Maybe maybe uh, we can talk about like other kinds of I don't know end of the world stuff. No. Well, right. <laughs> Post apocalyptic scenarios. The Last of Us. We got a new patch, and you know what? Let's just stop that. And let's hit uh, deck. <laughs> Steam Deck performance and uh, Last of Us Part One is now Steam Deck verified. You'll find the yes. That's what I'm trying to get to. One deck, two deck, three deck. Steam Deck. A hey. <laughs> couple of things in this. I've been keeping my eyes on this game because I want to play it. And I was kind of taken back because with Steam Deck got its own section for The Last of Us. And overall improvements to performance. Memory leaks have been fixed. Uh, fixed an issue where the game HUD didn't match Steam Deck's performance overlays. I could have been a little bit wrong. Mm. Effects density now it's on like very low because you're playing this on the Steam Deck. That's to be expected. It's look like a Smiro vision. That's okay. And um, where am I at with this? Well, this is Naughty Dog. 
they're learning about this. And here's something I want you to keep in mind. I haven't bought the game. I've never played the game. I desperately want to play the game, but I'm not giving my money. I gave, I, I gave Sony my money for the God of War. I gave, I gave Sony money for, um, damn it. What was a uh, Spider-Man? Yeah. <laughs> then I learned my damn lesson. That's where I'm at right now, because yeah. we're about halfway in to the six month cycle until Sony gets a game that is going to be kind of up and working. It doesn't matter who's boarding it. It doesn't. Naughty Dog or the company that they bought. Iron Galaxy. This yeah. Is the, this, this is the one that um, they've been using for Uncharted and uh, and this one as well. And apparently they're still wrapping their heads around porting these uh, PlayStation 4 games to PC. Uh, they are, pre- I, I looked into them. They are actually a pretty like well-established porting house. They do mostly do console ports, but I guess this is like the first batch of PS4 games that they're getting their hands on. Well, I mean, this is uh, Naughty Dog doing this one, right? right? And Iron Galaxy. Yeah. yeah I, uh, but I, Iron Galaxy is the porting house. I think they're like, I don't, I don't think Naughty Dog is going to be doing any sort of the like Windows platform specific stuff. It would just be like, we don't know. The, the, yeah. You, I mean, <laughs> no, you, you, to be fair, Uncharted, up. Uncharted, when that came out, it did run like poo, but after the first big patch, it ran okay. When I, I mean, got I mean, the uh, 5800X 3D, um, Uncharted was the free game that came within. And by the time I got it, it ran very much and, all right and and to to ven's point yeah like i i think like to any any sort of like triple a game these days any any sort of big title yeah wait about six to eight months because like these things always have issues on launch uh it's all it's always crappy there's always game breaking stuff and you know if you wait the game is cheaper and those things yeah are don't buy games on launch don't pre-order just don't <laughs> now this is also a different conversation though because like a, a game that's decided to you know come out for pc right and it's going to get launched and it's getting launched to the public for the first time anywhere but we're dealing with something like this game's older than some of our viewers <laughs> you know coming all the way back from the ps3 and it's going through a porting house you know second party um you know like horizon zero dawn this is like there is a just you can set time to it give it six months give it the third update wait till the third big patch drops from sony and you're gonna have some playable most recent example spider-man no just keep that in mind keep that in mind because i know a lot of you out there are excited about ratchet and clank i know i am you want to run out and buy it no i don't (laughs) uh but you know we we we, we could talk about uh advertising in games that's this is this this is the new hot button topic yeah so uh (laughs) scs scs soft you might know them from euro truck simulator and american truck simulator uh, and you might have noticed if you're playing these games, at least uh, American Truck Simulator, that there have been some new uh, new billboards coming up on on the sides of the road here, advertising for uh, actual actual jobs for a logistics company, uh, providing a route to get your commercial driver's license and become an actual trucker instead of a tr- simulated trucker. Uh, and yeah, that's some that's some vertical integration right there. Cause like we were talking about this a lot in, in the pre pre super shows, because it's like a it's a pretty broad topic. But like taken on its own, taken taken as like just an individual fact, this doesn't seem too bad, right? Trucking trucking company wants to advertise positions at their actual company to people playing a truck game. Seems seems about right. If maybe maybe convert some hobbyists into actual career people, recruit some people, everyone makes some money, it's happy. But this opens the door to a conversation about like native advertising in games. And what what does it mean when you pay for a game, like you pay you pay full price for a game, and then you get ads on top of it. And in addition, Euro Trucks or the truck simulator games in general, they're very DLC focused. You they make their money by you being buying the base game, and then if you like a particular model of truck or whatever, you go buy that one. Uh, and that that's that's how they make money. Now they're introducing this new uh, this new like revenue vertical. Does this mean that the game is going to get cheaper? Generally not. Gener- gener- generally things just become more and more ad driven, and you also have to pay. For the privileges of like not seeing ads, they're they're disableable right now. But will that always be the case? It may or may not be. I mean, I I first heard about this on Google News, and I just glanced over. And they're like, hey, they're going to be putting in actual like recruitment billboards from this company. So people, I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. More and more, I got on about it. More and I, and I and I read this blog post, and this blog post just hits you the wrong way, right out of the gate, and you're like, 
Why, why, why are you writing it like this? It's like, this, this feels skeezy. What are you up to? What are you up to? What's going on? And you do that and you're like, oh, no, no, no. This is our first test where we're putting the mechanisms in place. Really? So, uh, but we're, we're going to be very particular. Like, yeah, that's targeted advertisement. That's what this is. That's what it is. You can spin it any way you want. And why should, Jordan's got good points. Why should you care? That's why you should think about it. What's really rubbing me the wrong way is a $20 game with a couple of hundred dollars worth of DLC. And they're not one. Because, you know, you read the um, blog post here. It's like, everybody's happy about this. Everybody's cool about this. Not one, but two locked threads by the game developer. Where people were decidedly not happy about this because they, <laughs> they're looking down the road. Like, what does this open up for? And do you really want to have Adblock Pro Mod for your truck simulator? <laughs> I mean, is well, that the future we're going to end up with? Is, is that where we're fucking at in 2023 where you got to get your Adblock Pro for your fucking video games to play it without well, getting... Well, and, and then the new DLC doesn't work if you have Adblock enabled mm-hmm, because it checks right? for it now. So <laughs> yeah, that whole It race. comes up with a little pop-up, turn off your Adblock or something right. to play the game. Right, it deflates one of your fucking tires. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the gas prices just like jack up to nine nine nine. Yep. Whatever, right? Like, you only have reverse. Uh, admittedly, okay. The the whole censoring people and locking down the threads when people are just voicing their discontent—that's not cool. I uh, think that that's they already did ads uh, for their own DLC on those same billboards in the game that are now just advertising for an actual real world company, and. Part of me gets it. It's like, okay, that's one more way for them to get money without the players needing to spend more money. So, you know, that that bit I can see. But yeah, I can also see why people don't like just being directly advertised too. That again, we live in the age of uh, AAA games and whatnot, just outright charging you $70 for the game itself. Uh, having day one DLC ready to go, having microtransactions in the game, and still putting advertisements in the game for other shit. Hello, EA. How are you this morning? <laughs> but you, uh, yeah, are, are you not thirsty for a tall can of Monster Energy Drink brought to you by Death Stranding? <laughs> uh, we yeah. were talking about Uncharted earlier. Uh, remember the subway integration? <laughs> well, I mean, wasn't there like Doritos and Metal Gear? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that might just be something Kojima put in there because he likes Doritos. That's also... So the, he, he now here's know. something that nobody's really touching on. Um, what type of um, metrics are they going to be offering to potential advertisers? Because they get your account, all that. Mm. They know where you drive, what you're up to in the game, what yeah, your like likes ad, and dislikes. Like, ad, like, ad, ad views. Um, if, if, you, if you take Like how many players actually drove past this billboard? <laughs> Or stopped. I mean, yeah, yeah. What is it going to be like? Ram the monkey billboard. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. In the I did a little bit of research. There's a community made mod packs for like realistic billboards. Eat more chicken. Yeah. And on on the face of it, this looks like something I'm like, oh yeah, I get it. Let's get recruit some people and all that. But do keep in mind that this is this is where it starts. This is not where it stops. Yeah, they're, 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 when, whenever someone says we're not going to be evil about it, it all they they they're never ever evil about it, right? Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And when your community comes out, don't don't start locking down threads. Be like these are naysayers and troublemakers. They have no they, the fuck you get form for. I yeah, mean, no. The, when you start doing that, that's when people get real angry and they start being justified in their anger. Dial back some of the ten god bullshit. <laughs> All right, Spe- right, Spez. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Reddit. Everyone <laughs> loves it, Jordan. This is hundred percent unanimous. Yeah, or you know, sell it, sell it. Be like, listen, here's why we're doing this. A, we like more money, but B, we're going to give you that multiplayer option that people have been asking for <laughs> ten years. Your Euro Truck Jousting Simulator. Yes, yes. <laughs> we're gonna smash yeah. the trucks into each other. We're gonna Absolutely. Get, we're going to get the Smoking Bandit DLC. It's going to be awesome. All right. So, yeah, look forward to that. Coming up next, another thing you can look forward to is the NVIDIA 4060 release because you absolutely want to buy one of those. It's right? cheap, man. Shut up. <laughs> <It's> so cheap. <laughs> Are you feeling like a freak on a leash? 
<laughs> well, you should be. Not really. It's a Linux gaming podcast. You probably should stay away from the intermissions. I don't know. Don't watch I've, us live. Don't do that to yourself. Doing you a Whatever capella, you <laughs> like a capella version of Freak on Elation Portuguese, like, kind of has me excited. I mean, Freak on Elation. Yeah, it was Freak on the Leash already has the, <laughs> the uh, acapella section. So if you would like to um, da, da, um, da, da, ima, head on over to patreon.com slash Linux game. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, hang on. There we go. Linux game guest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, or go to um, da, da, um, da, da, ah. sign up for our Patreon, sign up for our Twitch, get into our discord channel, which you can uh, talk to us the other six days of the week on RSVP to game streams. Ven does stuff on uh, Fridays and Tuesdays. And Track I Media, on Tuesdays and Fridays. And you are currently playing with one Michael T. Han. You might know him from Shot Realm Dynamic as Empty. Yes. You guys are trying time portals. It is fucking just as gnarly hilarious as it possibly sounds. Watch yeah. for hours as they stand there next to each other going, the what the fuck? fuck? We don't know what to do. <laughs> what do we do? My you brain. try this. Uh, I, I, definitely watch the beginning because you can see Jordan attack tackling this like a work problem it's like you gotta do this gotta do this gotta do this and it evolves yeah, yeah, into by, by, by the end of it i'm just like uh no brain power left. <laughs> it's lovely if you're looking for a group of people to get together and do a little bit of racing in our retro 2011 truck mania squared game come check us out on tuesdays we invite you if you're a twitch sub or a patron hop into speaking discord of, uh, get the launch codes push. We got to thank uh, Katana for a yeah, we do. for three months, 30 months, 30 of, months, with, uh, uh, Twitch. With, uh, Twitch Prime. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if you got a Twitch prime sub and you want to toss it our way, might as well do it. It's free money. It's free real estate. Hey, if you want to cover yourself in LGC merchandise stored at Linux teamcast.com, we got stickers, we got shirts, we got shirts, with long sleeves, shirts with no sleeves and even shirts with short sleeves. What, what you- about those weird, weird shirts for your legs? No, no, no leg shirts, no, <laughs> no hand shirts. gloves, um, but no, no hand shoes. Damn it, dude. Uh, do you, do you like long sleeve t-shirts? No, I'm not a fan of them. I, 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 no. uh, I, I wear long I'll sleeves. I'll wear the man. mess pajama shirts during the winter. If it's cold, uh, I just want to yeah. keep my sleeves covered up. I mean, even, even when I'm wearing like long sleeve shirts, I'll roll them up just cause damn yeah. it, like, <laughs> now that's want, literally what I do. You know, like those fake sleeves that you can buy. Oh yeah! Up, now I was like, do they make those in like My Little Pony? That'd be a fun bit to like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, what else? What else? We got uh, Wish Zones as well. If you head yeah, over to LinuxTeamCast.com, put your mouse on the yeah. support button. I have right. one. Ven has one. Jill has one. Pedro has one. You can buy. Dr- stuff what the hell is this? All right, let me guess. Uh, boxes. Crash pads, actually. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay, uh, so just the I, pads, I did, right. I, did update, okay. I did update the wish list with the with the arm that you recommended though. Uh, I took, I Dude, took the, okay, the old yeah, like the, the old arm. So <laughs> yeah, Jordan and I both want uh, for different. I mean, space saving. I want to get microphones. Mm-hmm. One for Jordan. You want Jordan? You you want to get closer to Jordan's face? Head over to his bush then. Hook him up. You, closer you to can, the face. He'll even have to thank you and read a little note. I got to do the same thing for the studio, but I found the one arm. You know, low profile swings out, you know, instead of these guys, which are like hanging over everything, yeah, you got to watch the, out about the, uh, scissor, scissor right? arms. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, let me do a little research in this company. And why was I doing it? I'm not gonna lie. I was like, mm, maybe I can get Jordan a free sample because we get hit by these small companies all the time. They're like, hey, shill our product. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, there you go. Like two other social media accounts were just like banned, man. I'm like, Ugh. probably not somebody we want to even buy stuff from. It might be a problem. So there's an Elgato, I'm like, I'll probably pick one of them. Uh, let's see. What do we got for Pedro? Pedro always wants Ram. Shoes. Yes. <laughs> bags. <laughs> laptop shoes. bag. It's a thin, low-profile laptop bag. Uh, that that one's probably going he's, to be my next he's purchase. He's walking uphill to the NHS, barefoot <laughs> both ways, buy him some shoes. With a file, with a file on each hand. Um, yes. <laughs> ah, good old double file, Mateo, as they call me. <laughs> Pretty much. I got one for the studio where I desperately, I, I got camera lenses. I got, speaking of vinyl, like uh, mass loaded vinyl, that's my kind of vinyal cameras. I got some audio shoot a laser at it and it will melt. <laughs> the big thing I want and I need, and I'm saving it for right now is that Epic motherboard. Everything else I can uh, swing. The super micro is not fucking coming down. I thought they were going to have a little bit of chill with these motherboards, like with the new Epics coming. I'm like, can we get like yeah. 300 bucks? And they're like, no. For a company called Super Micro, their pa- their prices are pretty shitty huge. You know what? I think they're reasonably reasonable. For, but, for an Epic board, yeah. Yeah. I, ju- I, just, I, just, I just wanted to make the joke. Oh, no. You're 100% right on that. We appreciate your support. Come say hi. 
hang out with us in Discord if you want. We're there. We treat it like Slack. That's where all our conversations happen. And uh, you're welcome to participate. Let us do what we do. Thank you. There we go. No mattress ads this week. No my little pony sleeves either. We do got a shill for our favorite leather jacket, though. Yeah, we do. (laughs) Everyone, (laughs) prepare yourselves for this breaking news. The the excitement is palpable. We're talking about a 4060 has been moved up to June 29th. It was originally supposed to launch in July, but nay, NVIDIA wants to get this in your hands. Now, admittedly, this was kind of surprising. This part was. By end of the month, yeah. Not the... Hmm. Two ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Now this is the forty sixty non TI version where they still this thing's shipping at the end of the month and they won't tell you how much memory RAM it has on it, which probably <laughs> means eight, possibly six. And holy hell, can you just imagine how slow this thing's going to be? Considering that the forty sixty TI was like I'm kind of the same speed as the thirty sixty TI. You guys just a hundred dollars more, but yeah, we all know, like it or not. Even this 4060 is probably going to whoop the 7600, which is objectively bad card from AMD. I don't think anybody's going to fight me on that. I mean, AMD lowered the price to 270 on release day. Then <laughs> got all the reviewers a little bit pissed off. It's like, ah, oh, so you're just going to remove 30 bucks off the price? Thanks. I wish Thanks. AMD had stopped doing that because that really pisses off like their core, ba- like the early adopters. Like, motherfucker, mm-hmm. you debated, you debated your customers. So. Mm. Let's, I think we just got to accept this, man. You know, like the 4060 Ti is going to be like, what, 500 bucks? This thing's going to be 300 bucks. Here's the reality we're living in, people. NVIDIA would like you to very much believe, which it is their reality now, 50 is the new 60. Because what you're buying for 300 bucks is a 40 and 50 in performance. Yeah, the 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 forty sixty Ti is legitimately the forty sixty proper. They're they they really did try to shift everything they've, up a model. They've, yeah. They, Mm-hmm. They, they they really did and like yeah we we just talked about the 4060 ti the the super announcement uh last week and so i you i think for sure this is definitely a hey we need to we we made a bunch of the stock already we need to get it fucking out of, out the door hey, now so that someone panic buys it <laughs> instead of waiting must have shill ass motherfuckers yeah tweak town yeah because they're all on crystal meth they're tweaking <laughs> no, out just that, that, that quote seems um Taken Truncated? out of context. Not do you think the whole sentence? At yeah, all. Do, yeah. Do you think the whole sentence Must was uh, lost their goddamn not mind charging this much for yeah. the card? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not necessarily a must-have at this price rate. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm more along the lines of must have lost their minds. I think that is the actual <laughs> quote. Yeah, no, it, it is uh, like in the UK right now. You can get a brand new 7600 for about 250 pounds. And uh, the uh, secondhand 3060 Ti's go for about the same buy now used on eBay. The 4060 is showing a list price uh, on NVIDIA's site starting at 290 pounds. So honestly, you, you got a lot of choice under 300 pounds. You, you have some choice. But if you want like sub 200, the RX 6600 uh, brand new or the or a used 6650 XT's are by far the better option because they're really cheap right now for what they do I mean, hell you can get 6800 xts for like real cheap now as well yeah you like can get the, those for under 300 pounds now so yeah the the the, 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 the market is saturated and like <laughs> nvidia and amd are not coming out with like really compelling alternatives to stuff that's yeah. already present <laughs> No, I, 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 what, what they had was like three years of really bad pricing, and they're like, "Hey, these are slightly like five dollars cheaper than the stuff that we've been releasing previously, and it performs not, not like a hundred dollars." No, not at all. I mean, this is like the same uh, when we came from the ten series to the twenty series. Man, they were leveraging uh, DLSS and ray tracing, which mm-hmm. were not really good at all on the 20 series. I'm not going to pretend they are, and I have a 2060 Founders Edition, so you know I can speak from experience. But the price jump, you're like, Rrr. and they, they, I feel like they've done this with the 40 series, like DLSS 3 and ray tracing. I'm like, that's neat. What about rasterization performance for the 99% of the games where I don't have to worry about like your yeah, locked all, in bullshit all, all features? All of my old fucking games, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, the best, like, bang for buck, as much as NVIDIA would like to pretend this doesn't exist, NVIDIA card that you can get right now is just to use 3060 Ti if you're in North America, man. You can get these things, you know, under 300 bucks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like if you can live like, you know, and they're eight gigs, do it. But yeah. no one's excited about your fucking three hundred dollar forty sixty. They're 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 really digging in their heels. They're really trying to like move that price point up. We're not going to buy it. Okay, the one thing this pandemic thing taught us for those three years where we just couldn't buy anything was patience. Mm. You you have <laughs> you a can, yeah. you market, can get another you got a consumer base, you got a group of people that <laughs> we've learned how to wait, even if you didn't know how before, because you didn't have an option. And, and, I, now, I, I, and I, I think like the, the, the mentality has shifted now, especially with like Steam Decks and APUs. Good enough gaming is kind of it. You don't necessarily need to People have learned it. to deal with what they yeah. got. Yeah, you don't mm-hmm. you don't need you don't need 1080p 60. 720p 30 is fine on a computer that you paid like three hundred dollars for, and you can play most. Or of the even for people that. without like yeah. deficiencies, you've learned that 1440 120. Like you maybe can cut this down to 1080p 60. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, you know what? This isn't that bad. Maybe I'll just keep using this hardware. People are people aren't going to bite. Nobody's got a value. Like we're living in this world with the a770. Again, I'll bring this up until this. That, that's a good value card right now, which is weird against modern, lower end, lower mid tier, I should point out, offerings from both AMD and NVIDIA was where, the A770 the, the, from last gen. Yeah, the, 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 seven, the 750D and the 770 like are still trading blows with this. And like we're all yes. and I, we were we were talking it up like last year, like, oh, man, these cards are not going to survive in 2023, 2024 when they have to compete against like new stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, it turns out we were wrong. <laughs> Yeah, it turns out both in price and in performance, Intel's doing pretty okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm pleased as punch. Like we, we were all writing Intel off, and then it's like we waited a little bit, and we're like, oh, it turns out not bad, not, not bad. bad at all. Give it some time. And then, and then they're like, hey, here's a here's a hundred and fifty card or a two hundred dollar card with twelve gigs of VRAM. Yeah, you want uh, this? Scott brings up a good point in um, Discord is. AV1, Intel were the ones that led the charge with AV1 on the GPUs. They get out the so, door first. I mean, that's a hard thing to fucking sell anybody on because. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what are you going to use it for? <laughs> but I got it. Shut up. I can do it. I can I can AV1 all over my fucking house, man. Shut up. Oh, AV1. <laughs> yeah, no, you, if you're doing, um, no, Steam doesn't do AV1. Transcoding. Either. Transcoding yeah, your yeah. media. <laughs> but Jellyfin. Jellyfin, yeah. NB, that kind Jell- of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, uh, my buddy does that with. Uh, he got one of the. Um, what, what, what was like the the, the really cheap Bifrost uh, one, like the one with the mismatched cooler? That is actually that was on. Uh, um, that was the Acer one. Acer, yeah, Wait, I, 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 this I think one. He, yeah, this one, dude. This thing's on sale right now for three thirty nine. Okay. <sighs> But yeah, the, 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 no, it, it wasn't this one. There was like another one that was like the the seven forty or whatever. He got one of the like the the, the real cheap one. He got one of those for like a oh, isn't there like the three eighty whatever the yeah, first the yeah, 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 the yeah, seven fifty yeah, those, that, those, that, those that, things that. are like ninety nine p. <laughs> yeah, no, but for like uh, for like MB transport coding, like if you just want to do AV one, like it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or the new A sixties, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, if you can get your hands on one of those, I I think if you set up a little stream box in your in your in your sis, in your house though, that's a bit overkill. <laughs> at, at least with the other one, you can play some games. I mean, for the price, I mean, yeah, man. it's like a hundred and thirty for the A sixty N. So yeah, you're not you're not breaking the bank, and, and you're profile. getting a significant yeah. performance, and you're getting AV one, and it's in a single slot. Yeah, yeah the, 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 that, that whole like lower mid range to lower segment is just fucking being ignored. You know what? Here's what you really should do, people. If you got like a jellyfin, you get a transcoding box, Ben. Put a fucking uh, forty ninety in that bitch just to piss your friends off. That yeah. that. I, I I mean, if if you're doing that, can I also have five hundred dollars, please? I'm, uh, if if you got money to piss away, then I I, I could use them. Uh speaking of money, that you don't necessarily piss away, but I mean. You, 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 sometimes it's better to have people do things for you. And that yeah, costs it's cheap. Yeah. This, and this yeah, those cases where sometimes uh, you don't want to put in the work to look at all of the different PCB makers. Maybe and how I'm much scared my soldering iron will melt my vinyl record collection. <laughs> like your laser yes, soldering yes, it will. iron. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, the Alpaca controller, you may remember it. It's right here. Thank you very much, Input Labs, for sending us the, the review unit. I pick it up literally every new game that I play. This is the first controller I play. I was with, thinking so. about that. Did, did, <laughs> did you have to like write them back and be like, "Do you want this back?" 
uh, no, I never asked, and they never ask for it back. So oh, so it's one you. of those situations. <laughs> yeah, so like, it's like, <laughs> t- t- tomorrow a brick is just going to find its way through your window. You know, I just imagine somebody from there, like, what they watch the show every day, and then they're like, yeah, he still hasn't sent that thing back. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if you want it back, you let me know, okay? If In you want meantime. it back, you can pry it from his cold, dead hands. <laughs> Uh, if you want to build one yourself, everyone else uh, who has an input labs, you can now buy most of everything from their store, including the PCB, with just the uh, surface mount devices soldered on. Uh, the through hole stuff you'll have to procure yourself, or you can buy the complete pack with the Raspberry Pi Pico separately from them as well. So, yeah, it's about um, 34 euros. And it is just like the base PCB with just the surface mount stuff. It's the Pi, the Pi Pico is probably going to be the hardest one to get in stock anywhere else. Pi Pico's you so, can get. Oh, you can get them now. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Pico. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't do enough to work. Industry really wants them. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's basically just like the raw Arduino competitor. Mm. Like barely, yeah. barely any CPU on there. So I added it up, man. I, I took a look at it. I'm like, what would it cost if I headed over to their store, their DIY kits, and I bought one of everything? You know, I got, I got the front case, and I got the back case. I got the buttons. I got the conductive hexagon, the PCB, electronic set, bolt set, soldering stand. It ain't cheap. It ain't cheap. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and say that. It's going to run you about $161 US to put one of these together. But... That's a pretty how flexible much, controller. And you know how what much, is how much the cost normally if you just go buy one? You can, can. just buy one. It's the completely then. DIY. Mm. Mm. Like, w- weren't, weren't they offering some print service or I guess that was parts? Uh, third parties. You can use third party uh, print services and you can give them something like, I don't know, PCB way. Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, you can just send them the files and the list of everything and it'll effectively just pre-solder everything and just send you the bits you know even ordering something i don't say that's still cheaper than a 3d printer so you know if you're somebody yes. who wants to do something at home <laughs> there you go go check it out all this is going to be in our show notes after the fact now i saw this come out this is something jordan's gonna give you a lot of information on the tilt five jerry allsworth this was like one of her little ideas when she was uh at valve and i was kind of shocked to see it like show up and like oh shit i thought like they just kind of fizzled out right yeah but apparently they have uh they have a product now that you can actually purchase this is the tilt five it is a virtual augmented reality bleh, board for playing board games role-playing games basically any sort of augmented reality games they show you their little video demo here and that which you can't see in the video version but you can set up um they have they have like a they have like an inbuilt version of Catan because fucking of course they do uh it's a <laughs> Every, every board game platform ever has their own version of Catan. Um, but uh, this uh, they have the software. It will uh, run on... Uh, they, they give you an Ubuntu version. They also give you the just the scripts and the non-debified version if you want to try getting this up and running on another distribution. They also have a bunch of the Windows drivers as well. But this isn't Windows Gamecast. We're not talking about this shit. Um, as for content, they actually have quite a bit of stuff already present. Um, especially through uh, one of the apps, Tabletopia, which is a board game engine for building AR board games that have um, a bunch of other games implemented in them that you can buy as uh, DLC. So, yeah, they're, 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 it's 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 definitely interesting. I think, like for me, the the thing that's in, the thing that's most exciting is the potential for like having this. On, oh like, fuck network. yes! Ho ho ho! Home invade. We're done. We're yeah, done. ho ho home invasion. <laughs> I saw that one. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, You're going uh, down, Red Man. Pretty, pretty Santa. It's like hit, hit, hit Man Go, but with Santa, it's crazy. Um, yeah, network multiplayer with this would be like really, really cool. Uh, the other, the other interesting thing is they have this like wand style controller, which I guess it seems a little, it seemed a little weird at first, but it makes sense. Like if this is, you know, you actually have to interact with stuff on the board game. So like a like a point or something probably makes the most sense from like a, from like a user experience thing. Yeah, uh, o- overall, you can pick it up for about 350 bucks, which is, you know, pretty reasonable for, like, a boutique board game thing that you can use to play a bunch of other games. Uh, yeah. How much uh, is that multi-pack? How much is that? Uh, two people, 660. So mm. it's a bit of a jump. How it's much is that three-pack? 
nine hundred dollars. I guess <laughs> if, we're, if we're if we're just adding three hundred dollars every time, uh, nine hundred and sixty. Yeah, <laughs> nine nine hundred fifty nine for the three pack. Uh, you can get a game board for sixty nine bucks, and you can get a smaller game board for fifty nine bucks. Yeah. I was pointing out this thing started um, Life at Valve, and just to give you a good idea, like good guy um, Gaben is, uh, you know, Jerry was working there and just doing the thing, and, and I was like, yeah, we're going to go in this other direction with VR. We're not going to mess with the AR, which turned out to be the you know index and all that fun stuff that we ended up with now. But she's like, yeah, I've been working on this, and she went and talked to Valve uh, and uh, talked to Valve, talked to Gaben, and Gabe was like. Yeah, take it with you. You can have it. That, 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 that's pretty solid. Like a lot of companies, yeah. they have like the it's IP like, restrictions is, yeah, in the you, contract. You, you, under you made this, this is our vision. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot more affordable than I thought it was going to be. You know, like three hundred bucks for all one pack, and you can't get the um, headsets and the controllers separately yet. So you might want to wait on that. But even at that price, you know, a thousand dollars for a three pack, so it's about sixty three point nine seven Hollow Knights. If you 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 want to play with one before you buy anything though right this is something I, I, that you I, want abso- absolutely yeah. but like and like it it, it seems it seems expensive but like some like there are some fucking expensive board games too like if you're going to be engaging with this as a hobby mm-hmm. there's already there's already sort of like an implied buy-in price so having something like this like yeah it's yeah yeah it's like a couple hundred dollars more but like grand scheme of things it's probably i mean if you only play one game yeah I guess, I guess yes. you only play one game. Mo- 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 most board game people don't, but I mean, if you're if you're gonna pay a thousand dollars to play one game, uh, I, I yeah, guess but... Fortnite. I guess Fortnite people want to talk to you. Like Tim Sweeney <laughs> is really really interested in becoming your friend. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Like you know, let's say you bought like three of those hundred dollar board games, and like, is that a complete good enough for everybody to play, or do anybody have to buy additional stuff if you get multiple people? Uh, uh in, in in for the tilt specifically. No, 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 for the actual like board game. game. Like, well, I mean, I mean, board, board games come with enough pieces for, like, however many players they support. Yeah. Like, some board games okay. are, like, only two people. And they're usually cheaper like than people. $300? <laughs> <laughs> Depending. It, 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 dep- it depends on the board game. And, like, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, when we were talking about this in the pre-pre-super shows, and the example I brought up was Twilight Imperium, which is, like, a $200 board game. Mm-hmm. And it is it has, like, a lot of, like, huge physical pieces to it. So something like this would be very, very useful and like having having like rules automation so you don't have to have every single fucking rule of the game in your head. You can move stuff and it will like auto calculate things like there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do to make board games a lot more accessible with a platform like this. And I'm very excited that something like this is exists and is like usable. Well, my first thought over. is like the setup by itself, like, OK, let's get the box of setup, drop the map, cut on, done. Let's go. Yeah, pretty, pretty yeah. much. Right. Like. The, the, the time to time to set up well, as well, like like I was mentioning, like the the rules automation stuff in virtual tabletop. That would be good. Huge. And the reason I think of like you know you like you're probably get like a, a couple of different games that you would want to play as like physical board games themselves. I'm trying to give you the tools to arm yourself for the mental gymnastics of buying a three pack. People, come on, I'm trying to help you out here. <laughs> little, little, yeah, listen, we're, we're 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 all gonna do it, man. You just gotta like get balance this out, right? <sighs> see, see all, see, but here I, I guess I guess the other problem is. If you're gonna buy the three pack, you have to have friends. Mm. Hard mode, <laughs> oh, or family. <laughs> you, no, you can just have people captive. That, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Torture your children. Uh, I mean, that's the, basically what makes making them play Monopoly does. <laughs> the glasses are USB 3.0. There's no some. There's no bullshit weird connector or anything to it. You just plug it right into your PC or whatever you want to drive it. Excellent. You, you gotta love that. No weird proprietary yeah. connectors. Does 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 the Facebook VR have like a weird proprietary connector? Or is that just no? It's USB C. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, all right. At least they didn't fuck that part up. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm sure somebody there's, there's versions of it with like a triangle connector or some shit. Like, uh, yeah, but yeah, gotta, no, gotta, that one specifically is just an Android phone. So, eh. <laughs> so what if you just want to generate a simple dungeon? Uh, well, you could go to tinykeep.com slash Dungan uh, for the web hosted one, or you could check out this GitHub uh, project, uh, Graph Dungeon Generator, which uh, is a tool to generate uh, dungeon type uh, structures using uh, graphs, uh, like the math- mathematical graphs, not like uh, not like bar graphs or whatever. Um, I played around with this a little bit, and uh, yeah, if you want, if you need something to like 
create like some quick levels, uh, this can definitely do it. I will say though that uh, the maps are pretty linear for my taste. When as as as, as, as someone who has read a lot of D and D adventures and like does 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 a bunch of dungeon design himself, generally you want to have a lot of like interconnectedness in your maps. Uh, so that you can create routes like that's that's actually the reason why like quake maps are so good is because they are highly interconnected and there 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 are multiple ways to get to like a single point teleports for interesting yeah get our uh teleports are one thing like connecting hallways t junctions the stuff that ex you can like exit on one level and drop to another level like all, all, yeah all, all that <laughs> stuff uh not really present so i would say if you're going to be using a tool like this you probably want to massage the maps a little bit more to make them it would be real with you if you ever see trebuchet in a dungeon just run that bitch is a mimic i mean what if, what if it's a trebuchet mimic that launches other mimics at you that can what teleport. if the bullets are mimics <laughs> oh it's mummy mimic right <laughs> it's it's mimicception it's a mimic inside a mimic inside a mimic <laughs> Pretty cool. Oh, yeah, what, yeah. what was the web-based version that you mentioned? Uh, tinykeep.com slash Dungan. I don't know if it's still up because I know I know Tiny oh. Keep the game was still using it. But that, that was that was my first thing because like the, the output is very similar to that. And, okay. it, and it uses like a similar um like graph-based uh, routing uh, algorithm to determine it. But it's still it's still neat to see. It's all done in uh, JavaScript, so you can check it out and run it locally yeah. if you want. Yeah. Dungeons, make them. Play dun play more table games. Use them to <laughs> make levels for your tilt five D D game spend five hours crafting this dungeon and then have your players go fuck off and play with a pig in a and remember kids yeah. tabletop games work on floors too they do biggest shelf in the house yeah pedro <laughs> lisp is something i've heard of i know it exists but i've never touched the filthy thing yes uh, i'm very much in that camp though we have at least a couple of people in our discord who are very much into it uh, there is, uh, there was also a spring game jam, which is now over. It ended on January 5th, the uh, spring lisp game jam, cleverly named 2023. Oh, I, I've been doing too much software development because there's a software framework called spring and I'm like, why would you want to use a Tomcat to make games? <laughs> oh, wait. No, not that not spring, the actual, you know, season. Uh, yeah, no, it is. It was a, uh, just a simple game jam to get your game written on Lisp. They could say you could have used any dialect of Lisp, uh, common Lisp, Racket, uh, Emacs, Fennel, Closure, whatever strikes your fancy, you could have used it. You could even have written your own if that was uh, what got you going. I had a look through the results and uh, they had three um, judging categories. Entertainment, it's like how enjoyable or replayable the game is. Uh, presentation, how does it look, how does it feel, that kind of stuff, and creativity is like how original the the game is. So is and everyone I, in this game the Joker, Ven? I don't know. <laughs> Even your list games, I got to slug through your bad writing. God damn it. <laughs> uh, the one that I saw of all like how the top ranked ones. Shoot, change. Oh, oh shit, it's something weird to me. What do I do? I like game. the top ranked ones that I could find was uh, Eval em Up. Which is a shoot 'em up where you are evaluating your enemies, which admittedly didn't, you know, score very well into creativity and uh, entertainment uh, because it was a shoot 'em up. Ah. And you, once you finished it once, there was no point to playing it again. But it looks really amazing. Like the fuck the speed notebook running book cutouts of Damn the, it. Um, I'm dead. <laughs> the notebook cutouts uh, graphics for everything that they had was really, really nice. It only ended up in seventh or sixth overall, which I think they got robbed. Eval him up was a lot better than seventh. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I looked at that one. And he's like, yeah, I started on like day eight of the two week game jam, so I wasn't able to do much. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, Lisp isn't usually a language that uh, people associate with game development, but we have we've thrown chairs at Candria, which was like a full like Celeste metroidvania done entirely through list lisp so it's good to see that like it's getting more love and more people are attempting to use it to make games and game jams like this are a really cool way to get into it i the only lisp i use is the odd time i need to edit my emacs configuration file because i'm one of those weirdos yeah <laughs> brackets brackets and semicolons that's all i can say bracket all the things check this out um there's been some developments in devolution x what's mm -hmm. devolution x pedro uh, it is the open, open source. 
<laughs> open source re-implementation of the original Diablo. Not engine. Diablo 4, not Diablo 3, not Diablo 2. Not, not Diablo Zero not Origins Hellfire. 1. Uh, no, it'll do Hellfire. Yeah, Hellfire <laughs> not, expansion. Not, not, not Stranger of Paradise, uh, Diablo <laughs> Hey, if you want to play the OG build, now you can. Even better. And I was talking about this in pre-show. Like, hey, this, this latest version, 1.5.0, got some big fixes for multiplayer. I mean, mm -hmm. big fixes, man. They, they got pretty much all of the multiplayer bits sorted out to where it's playable now. And like, even some of the desync issues they were having, latency issues, handling that a lot better. They've even added support for the original Xbox because f***ing reasons, son. Don't you love open source? Uh, I want to hack through this. I do. I've never played the original Diablo or any of the following ones after that, for that matter. However, I want to go through the online multiplayer one day. And it's super easy, especially considering that you can just get all the data bits on COG. But tons of bug fixes in this. Like, this thing just coops going all the way. I'm like, where's my download? And you can things? actually bind gamepad buttons now. <laughs> they got an app image. They got a tar.gz. PS4. Runs on ARM. Runs on fucking everything, man. This, is, this is cool as hell. Xbox, Xbox. One. <laughs> oh, man. What is this? Whatever that is. The RG350. So, Leap Us? Uh, leap, leap uh, the us. RG350 is the Embernic. Um, ah, the, the Amiga. <laughs> you can get an Amiga port of Diablo. Oh, man. Okay, now I wonder. I guess it supports cross-platform multiplayer so if somebody's played with their vita and somebody's played with their amiga online somehow i want that see that if that they would got be a fun that working stream. that would be yeah it's just like <laughs> how, how how fucked up can we get like cross-platform multiplayer like <laughs> haiku to symbian to to windows ce to to xbox one to yeah like i uh, and jordan was like i'm my player warrior I, you've I'll, you've played I'll, it though I'll right do it. yeah I've, I've played it as long as I can get it to like play with a controller, so I don't have to sit and click constantly, uh, <laughs> I'd be down for a little uh, bit. I, 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 I will click until my my carpal <laughs> tunnels just burst into flame. The um, well, I said that's like one of the issues. Like, I really enjoyed playing Torchlight too, but I quit playing it after a short period of time because I don't like replacing micro switches, and I know how to replace micro switches, mm -hmm. which <laughs> is a lot uh, less expensive. You know, eighty since versus buying a new mouse and anything mm -hmm. that requires me to just hammer on up i'm like uh-uh yeah uh, like uh it, they're using they're using sdl so i'm sure the controllers will work it's just i i don't know how well that would work in in diablo one uh, two words for you steam controller yeah <laughs> Even without the Steam controller, uh, when you get close to anything, you could just have the highlight. It's like, okay, you're selecting this, and you can just have the one click yeah, yeah, on no, one no, of the I, triggers, I, for example. I, I, <laughs> yeah, but I, I want to go. I'm sure. But so, so like, here, here's the thing, though. Is like, D1 didn't really have hotkeys. You had, like, left click and right click for your powers. And there was, I remember there was a lot of, like, juggling between yeah, all the power a lot sets, of so. quality of life shit added to it like that though a lot yeah, so, like a so, lot. Yeah, so, so, so maybe right like i i, I haven't looked at when um, i streamed this. it the um the developer actually went on the comments and like okay here's all the things that you didn't mention uh the scrolling the ability to scroll with a scroll wheel the uh, like being able to interact with npcs uh, being able to sprint, being able to have all the quests available right off the bat instead of just getting random quest assignments. Yeah, they, they've done a lot. <laughs> Pedro, well, that, what is, uh, the, is that the Oculus Quest? Yes, two. Oh. Hang on, I gotta fill a lot of this issue. Does Devolution X support it? Can you? Oh, uh, well, uh, hey, VR, you gotta VR open Ablo? up issue request. It, it, it's on Android, so probably can sideload the APK. How it's gonna work, I don't know. You know what? I, hey, I want, I want now that VR we know that it's on Android, we don't need to bother with that, Pedro. Well, you will just use your Android device and some tape, and you can join <laughs> in. Yeah, you just gotta tape it to your face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that that. That's running Android. Y you access it by loading up the a uh, ADB server and just pushing side loading um, APKs to you, it. So then, like, how, how, how fucky do, do I get? How flexible with this Android shit do I want to throw down? And be like, yo, man, this thing doesn't run on my uh, Sony A5000 mirrorless. This doesn't run camera, on my HTC Dream, which also runs Android, by the way. 
<laughs> well, uh, they have like limitations of Android on their front page. Let's have a look. I know. I know. I can tell that. No, my goddamn camera, though, Pedro. <laughs> Over right, Wi-Fi. So tell that it into your camera. No. Oh, <laughs> I got in, got out. <laughs> then I just say, Boo- "Fucking tell that on my goddamn camera." I couldn't escape. They don't say what's the minimum Android version, so maybe? <laughs> Time to find out. All right, let's get out of here. Coming up next, Foxy is going to school us about Risk Five, and we're just going to completely ignore him and call it whatever we want. I was having a bit of a sip of my drink, but hey, the show, it's done. It's over. It's uh, the show another must week go on. Your drink. <laughs> Uh, this show is dead. Long live this show next week. Uh, now, if you'd like to let us know if we said anything that was completely out of line or that we didn't dig in far enough, as the case may be, you can do that. You can shout at us in the street or you can go to LinuxGameCast.com. I'd rather you shout at me in button. the sheets. You can do that, too, if you find yourself in that position. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think anyone would uh, be against, you know. Some loud, sexy times, but the contact page no, just, on just our website. In bed. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about, you pervert? We're just up at screaming Night at people. Night terrors and yes. whatnot. <laughs> but ah, no, there's <laughs> the contact button on our website is the the place that you should go to. Guaranteed that someone will at least read what you want to say if you get past the spam golem. If you don't, well, that's on you. The the caveat was there. You just didn't read it. Hey, beautiful party people. We want you to come on the show, too. If you're working on a game, you got an open source project, head us up. That's what it's there for. Select that topic. Be like, hey, let's talk. We'd love to get you on. Have a conversation. Devolution X guys, hit us up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That way you can tell Pedro all the shit. Yes, you yeah. can tell Pedro all about <laughs> scrolling. Uh, we got one bit of hate mail this week from Mr. Foxdog. He says, come on, you knew this was coming. Even though what was arms- coming? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. No. Even though ARM started as RISC, <laughs> it really isn't anymore. RISC V reference manual is 12 pages. ARM 64 is thousands of pages. As I have been shouting x86 underscore 64 to RISC 5, RISC V is the last step, like Rosetta. Rosetta, because that's not spelled correctly. Mm-hmm. It's full pathway for now Intel and AMD to go down RISC V route. P.S. It's RISC 5, as it's the fifth RISC machine from Berkeley, not RISC V. Patterson, P- Peterson made me say that. Well, you know what? As we were talking about, like total total war colon Warhammer versus total Warhammer, I'm just gonna call it Risk V, man. You can't. I'm stop just gonna me. call it Risk now. I'm, I'm, I'm resetting the timeline. Fight, fight me. It's just Risk. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're gonna Mortal Kombat this. Mm-hmm. From right. now on, we're just gonna call Risk Five Mortal Kombat Twelve. That's right. I mean, it's going to be ARM, it's going to be RISC, like, whatever, by the time this shit gets mature enough to, uh, and I understand a lot of people getting, like, really excited about uh, RISC V, but, I mean, you're going to see some really cool stuff come out of it because of the open nature of it, but the stuff that you're going to want, the stuff you're going to really want to fucking play with, stuff that gets made that you want to put in your desktop, that shit's not going to be open. Yeah, like what the the effects guy was using those Vision Five boards. You're also mm-hmm. limited by like the, the the companies that will make uh, boards that are capable capable of like running stuff to any sort of significant degree. And I mean, hopefully they will be modular. But if seeing seeing the trend move towards system on chip and like more integrated packages, I don't think we're gonna see like Risk Five boards that you can plug like your old RX Five Eighty into to get. Some oh, we will, but they're gonna cost more than that fucking Epic motherboard that I want to buy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all it's all going to be specialty hardware that like, yeah, it's really cheap if you order a thousand of them. But if you order one of them, they're like, yeah, twelve thousand bucks. Yeah, the, the they had the um that mini ITX or micro ATX motherboard a while back that just to get you in the door was six hundred bucks, which <laughs> it's cheap when you compare to all of the other ones that uh, had been released up to that point. But it's still a lot of money for something that is very, very low performance. Mm. And, and like may, maybe, maybe the proliferation of risk will like um, will, will be like it. Like uh, to me, it seems like it's going to be like a long term thing in the makerspace, especially because not having to deal with licensing of hardware. 
um, is going to mean that like a lot of like, as, as you know, as 3D printing gets better, like making your own fucking CPUs and whatnot becomes tenable. Like, yeah, we, we, we might start seeing some, some advances in that regard, but like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know when, when, when is the year of the risk desktop coming? That's the, that's the question. <laughs> I liked, uh, uh, was it Katana that said Risk V and uh, Waylon are going to be mature at around the same time? <laughs> well, I mean, when you get to think about things, uh, you get everything's not going to be Risk V. And the first thing that came to mind, guess who wants to fucking buy most of uh, ARM for their <laughs> IPO? <laughs> Intel. And Video wanted to buy all of it. <laughs> they want to. Intel wants to invest heavy in ARM. Why? Because Arms already got its shit together. X86 is kind of a dead end, yeah. It's, and they're uh, thinking about the server space, and they've seen, you know, Apple's like, hey, this is what you can do if you fuck around with your own custom silicon. <laughs> if you do, like, an actual high-performance ARM CPU instead of Speaking just having of to... With, like, naming issues, M1, M2 Ultra, Ultra Turbo, or whatever the fuck it's called. At least th they called something, called it, like, put an extra bit at the end there. <laughs> Oh, what did we think about Intel dropping the i? I, I, I. Yeah, oh, the, the uh, Intel nine. I nine i all the i shit's gone. Yeah, but, but again, honestly, that doesn't are, make much of a difference. People are still going to call them i sevens and i nine. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> as, as opposed to the a sevens and the, I guess the the, the r sevens and the r fives. Mm -hmm. That's kind of been like the the like it. Intel was a little too successful with that naming scheme because like. It, it's they kind of defined too, it, yeah. <laughs> it, it's 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 highly self-explanatory. Like you, the the three is better than the or the three is worse than the five, which is worse than the seven, which is worse than the nine. And yeah, don't worry, they've replaced it. Like, you, you don't have to worry about like I this, I this, I this anymore. You just go oh, ultra. It's U U yes. five, U three. It's the Intel U7. Core five, the Intel Core seven, the Intel Core nine. Ultra yeah. 5, or, or, Ultra 7, Ultra 9. <laughs> I, 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 the five, Ultras, they're I, you... probably going to replace those with the different SKUs. Like, it's a, if it's a laptop SKU, it's the Intel Ultra Low Voltage. Intel branding introduces Ultra for higher-end chips. Ah, okay. <laughs> so The higher-end ones, yes. And the other ones will just be the Core 5, Core 3, Core 7, like it says there. <laughs> well, you mean the Core 7 1300 ABXZW4? I I, yes. I I look forward <laughs> you, to spending that's two years trying to fucking internalize what all these model numbers. I've mean never been able to keep track of like outside of like Pentium Four. Once it started getting to like and, and how many decades has it been? It's like oh, I got an i seven. That don't mean shit. Well, yeah, it's the seventy seven hundred U or you the talk about something that needs like the date next to it. The i seven two thousand to what? That is the full thing because you have i sevens that are now uh sixteen or twelve core. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have i sevens, i nines. Uh, you have i sevens that are eight cores. You have i sevens that are four cores. You have i sevens that are dual cores. I mean, that that, that was already the case in <laughs> like the early uh, early uh, i fives, right? Like the the mobile ones were dual cores. The desktop ones yeah. were quad cores, and then like quad cores kept, without hyper threading. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 they and they kept that ambiguity for a while. I think they need to take a page out of Acer's book. And have just like random letters that no one can pronounce at the end of the model numbers. It's a great I way think to that's make just sure that you have in general, not just acers. <laughs> Acer, acers especially egregious. <laughs> you know what? At least you can ballpark what the fuck generation an AMD CPU was. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Like starting with like the Zen, even back then, like with the Athlon XPs and like the Athlon 2s. And the, bulldozer, the the, the 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 1090 T, the 69 or the 6300 X or whatever. Mm. But yeah, the, the, the 150, the 8350, and that's kind of where they called it. Oh, the, there was the uh, the 95 90, mm. 99. Uh, but to get, the one that burned motherboards, that one. Yeah, the Mobo <laughs> melted. To yeah, steer us back towards <laughs> the remember, ARM conversation. Remember early early days of five gigahertz CPUs, man. Steer us back towards the ARM conversation is both AMD and Intel a decade ago were both working on ARM. Mm -hmm. And they've sold that off or discontinued it since then. They're like, oh, shit. You know, somebody's like, fucking told you. A no, AMD like, went, was trying to go like hardcore into heterogeneous compute 
Like with they had their own like arm opterons and shit. Yeah. Mm. We'll see. No, it's all happened before. It'll all happen again. Isn't that right? What 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 kind of architecture do you think the Cylons are running? Are they x86? Are they <laughs> <Battleship>. x5? <laughs> uh, hmm. when, 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 R- 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 risk six because you know yeah, number I'm six. Checking the time. Maybe we we'll get enough time. Maybe like three minutes, and we we we'll get to roll some credits. But um, when are we going to hit Moore's law? On arm with, with, theory. With, with, I mean, with 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 a truck. <laughs> Pedro, you sound like you want to intelligently reply to that question. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, are we going to hit Moore's law with x eighty six sixty four? Yeah, I don't think we're. We've already hit it. We've run it over, and it, we've already dug a grave and put it in the ground. But with arm and with brisk V, ah, that probably won't be for a while. Do you so think like, we were going to solve more, it with like triplets was- and cores? I mean, more, more, more was talking about like transistor counts and like yeah, transistor individual, individual counts. CPUs, okay, let me right? rephrase this. Let's say I didn't say anything about Moore's law. Well, this what like the well. And then what are we talking about? <laughs> That's why I need to redefine it. Uh, commonly accepted when you tell somebody about Moore's law, they know what the fuck you mean. Um, but this show, being this show, is when are we going to run into an actual performance wall? Uh, like, like we, 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 like, we just can't like push back like six gigahertz or something like, has, I, I mean, performance, it doesn't have to, I mean, efficiency, IPC, gigahertz, whatever you want to mix chiplets, S and yeah, yeah. on x86, want. I think we're getting to that wall very much right now. I, I, I mean, I mean like per, per unit, sure. But then you're, we have, we have parallel computing, right? Like we have computer clusters. So on your desktop, I, on your mobile phone. I mean, kind of. Yeah, you're 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 connected to a cloud. Your gaming console does a lot of like off off uh, console rendering now via the cloud. Game yeah. streaming exists. Uh, offload exists. Um, most most of the shit that you, most of you like when you when you submit a search so for back your to Gmail, the question, it goes you through fucking hit Google's the wall. Cluster. Like, I th- what what is the wall? What 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 is this wall <laughs> that we're hitting? I guess defi- like in terms of performance gains, the, the yeah, way to, that we play around and spitball <laughs> and have some fun to I'm, theorize I'm, and I'm, think about it instead of like trying to tear apart the concept. You I'm, get what I'm, I'm saying? I don't. <laughs> Pedro, you yeah. want to take a crack at it? You get what I'm saying? That, that's the thing. For x86, I think we're at the point where there's not a lot more to be had. Pun intended. The um, how far can we go down though? How many nano? What nanometer are we dealing with? Like, are we going to get sub one nanometer in fabrication? Uh, Someone's probably going to try. How do we deal with transistor leakage at that point? Like, we're dealing with like (laughs) quantum. Uh, can uh, how do we know if the transistor even is there (laughs) without getting into (laughs) quantum computing? Uh, the we got to roll over into qubits. <laughs> but the qub- qubits present their own problem, right? Like creating quantum cooling. computers is yeah, cooling. Yeah, cooling is the, cooling gotta is find that one. superconductor that works at room temperature. Gra- come on, graphene. Come on, just, just aliens. Gotta take the pencil out and peel it apart. <laughs> I don't know. I, I definitely feel at some point we're going to run into a situation where we're not going to be able to throw more um, megahertz at a problem. Well, th- I, th- I think the, the the other the other thing too is like our code is woefully inefficient. Like there is yeah. so so much is being done at the hardware level to make up for like bad programming. And, and this that, that's the gets thing. me to the second part yeah. of the statement. I'm like, when is that going to kick in? Because once we kind of hit our performance barrier, like okay, we're like we don't have to possess the fabrication techniques and material science in order pull off what we think the next generation or whatever is going to be how much performance are we going to be able to make up with just like hey let's not run a fucking web browser to have our instant messenger (laughs) yeah optimization really needs to kick back in you know linux game cast and all that you see games nowadays that look like but they look worse than ps3 games and they run like shit on modern day cpus or, and gpus or, or 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 the joke that we make in the steam segment it's like oh yeah hipster pixel game how big is it two gigs nice mm-hmm. yeah 
Yeah, we need that optimization. And the fact that we have hardware that is that powerful that can effectively brute force games into running a playable-ish state is great. But can we please go back to up? optimizing things well and i mean we're, we're, we're seeing we're seeing that with uh with like emulators right like emulators are very yes. very concerned with that level of like code optimization and like because like that's where it is they're not even yeah. writing that code it is a compiler that is writing that code so now you need to write the software that can produce more efficient code it, yeah so i guess very, like one very, of the things i'm curious things. about is like is it still a thing to where when you're doing game design you front load that technical debt and be like, Hey, we're going to pay that off for the next generation of GPUs. You know, the whole, will it run crisis type shit from back in the day of like, there's not a PC made that can run our game right now. And that game was optimized to shit to run the way that it did. <laughs> like when's that not going to be in that? That's like this theoretical wall I'm putting up there. Like, well, the next generation, you know, but then we get artificial things like Nvidia going, well, the next generation, anything outside of the 4090 is going to be shit. So hope you didn't well, buy and, that. And what, and I mean, like you're, you're seeing NVIDIA right now, they're pushing their software based solutions because like you need to more efficiently use the hardware. Like that's what but DLSS it, and even, all that shit is trying to do, right? Like even the 4090 is showing that, uh, you, in terms of space, yes, we can probably still push Moore's wall a little bit, but in terms of thermal capacity, the size, the chunk of the 4090 is in the heat sink. That's, and the, that's like three the, slots of aluminum and copper that are required to cool something that's, what, uh, built on three nanometers or five nanometers, whatever it is. That just sounds like you don't water cool your 4090, bro. <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, if you're if already you spending uh, $1,600 on a might GPU, you might as well, well get the right. water cooler. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think there's a situation where I'm getting a 4090 that I don't spring for the water cooling option. Yeah. <laughs> that would well, be like I, seeing I mean, the you, you Ferrari with like, fucking the, 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 the motherboard the, sag, the right? Like, like, yeah, the, it's, yeah, it's your board sag, and you still need to account for at least the 240 or 280 millimeter uh aio that you're gonna slap well, on i mean it? in all fairness you were thinking about a case that was going to fit a 49 in the first place just link what do you what do you mean it can't fit in my micro atx case no man uh -uh. i mean that does reduce if you put a water block on it it does reduce the footprint significantly so <laughs> maybe you get an adapter to add that back we can 3d print it just make it <laughs> for no reason <laughs> all right we've strung this out as long as we can everyone running long we got to roll some credits. So how about we do that on that arm powered, risk V powered, reduced instruction set powered bombshell. We're going to cue the music. You can always check us out at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time right here at twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. Come join in the live show. If you haven't lived that life, enjoyed that experience, do it to yourself just once. You'll probably recover from it. It could be trauma for the rest of your life. Who knows? Roll those fucking dice. I dare you. Scream at me on Twitter. I'm still hanging out there at Vince Stone. Federated timeline, mass.linuxteamcast.com. Doing that. Always available in our Discord and IRC as well. I fail at obeying complex instructions. I fail at uh, complying with reduced instructions. I am Jordan, and you can find me, I don't know, doing a bunch of random you're the trend. You're the Caruso processor of... Uh, I uh, yes, I, I am the David Caruso of <laughs> ARM architectures. I don't know. Find me on Twitter at the Burning Fool, Mastodon at Frojo at Mastodon.linuxgamecast.com and twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And this week, I am the uh, vital record. I have a one track mind, and uh, yeah, we'll just go leave being it the at vital that. record well, and start are, being are, the laser are, are, are you melting <laughs> because I'm pointing a laser at you? <laughs> no, I'm not a cat. Uh, but yeah, the um, best way to get in touch with me is still Twitter. I suppose you could shout at me on um, Mastodon. That's unaccounted for with the actual number four at MassAthleticsGameCast.com. I'll get a notification, but Twitter, unaccounted for, F-O-U-R, that's the one I'll probably check. <laughs> Time for some credits. Credit button. Do the thing. Oh my god, button. Man, did you did you see the, the, the issue with the French translation of the Barbie poster where it's like she oh, can no. do anything. Ken just fucks. <laughs> That's what it translates to. 
Oh, we got we got to thank our advisors. We got to thank Omegas and Arthur and <laughs> and, and our on executive YouTube short and our executive <laughs> producers who definitely fuck Bob Ryan, Scott Michelle, Topic Ass, Mike Dream, Cummer, Cummer, Drummer, Kohaku, Pebble, <laughs> Tomas, Hakeem, David, and he's Chef. He's a comer. Chicago already. kicks butt. Super that's dope. Empty. Glorious aggro and blasphemia. With the sea monsters, Renault, Ryder X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin Nub, and Darkwing, System T, Dancing Joe, Ogi One, and Kyrulo. Um, I'm not muted now. Um, Nova. Aerobatic Death. See, look how quick I did it. You didn't even hear me say the ones in between. <laughs> yes. We got Cherlings, Jason B, Lord Maka, AJ, Brock, Giovanni, Joanna, Gronk de Longa, Paulo, Colsta, North Ranger, Craig, Mr. Crazy, Red, Simcha, Zeno, Steven, Vasca, Douglas, Alamzalana, Tomaz, AJ, Ross, Monica, Zen, 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 Kajore, which I forgot. Week number two. Let's see if we can go for week number three before I remember. Yeah. Poor, Kai, poor Kai, man. He's <sighs> he's fucking helping us Get out. A he's, raw he's, deal, he's man. Fight, fighting the good fight. And Subconsciously, man. Uh, yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. See you next week. Until then. Dynavite. Bye. Oh, the Stumble, Stumble Buddy screenshot is an Android screenshot because that's got... Uh, Thumb pad on the screen. <laughs> Your thumb pad on the screen. Five dudes. <laughs>